Hi everyone, in this video I'll be discussing requirements determination. The learning objective for this video is as follows. After watching, students should be able to classify requirements correctly according to several different categories, and students should also be able to describe the content and purpose of the requirements definition document. This is a document that you'll be required to complete for your project later in the semester. There are many different types of requirements. Business requirements, if you'll recall from Chapter 1 and the system requests that you prepared, are what the business needs from the system. User requirements are what the user needs to be able to do, and we'll talk more about those in Chapter 4. The third main type of requirement is system requirements, which is the focus of this week. Understanding the difference between all these different types of requirements, as well as being able to accommodate all of them, is key for an analyst's job to be successful. On Titanium, I posted a link to an article that more clearly explains the practical importance of understanding the difference between these types of requirements. Now you might be thinking, what is a system requirement, since you didn't define it on this slide? A system requirement is a statement of what the system must do, that's called a functional requirement, or a statement of characteristics the system must have, or how the system should be built, that's called a non-functional requirement. Functional requirements specify the support the system will provide to the user in fulfilling his or her work tasks. There are two types of functional system requirements. A process the system should perform as part of supporting a user task, or information the system should provide as the user performs a task. If you think about the Titanium system, the functional requirements are that the system must support a student user in uploading an assignment, and it should also store information about the student's grades. Here are more examples from the textbook of both process-oriented and information-oriented functional requirements. Remember, functional requirements are what the system must do for you. On the other hand, we have non-functional requirements. Non-functional requirements are not things that the system should do, but rather behavioral properties that the system must have. There are four main types of non-functional requirements. Operational has to do with the physical and technical operating environment in which the system runs. Going back to the example of Titanium, we might say that Titanium should be able to run in Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, and Safari. This is an important requirement of the system, but it's not functional because it doesn't specify what the system does. What the system does is create a place to store grades, submit assignments, etc., regardless of which browser you use to open it. The second type of non-functional requirement is performance, speed, capacity, reliability, and so forth. For example, we want student assignments to be able to not take more than 10 seconds to upload to the system. The third type of non-functional requirement is security, including access restrictions and needed safeguards. For example, you have to log in with your Cal State Fullerton username and password in order to access Titanium. The last one is cultural and political. These have to do with legal requirements or cultural norms. This could include languages that the system must operate in or legal requirements with which you must conform. For example, the Titanium system must comply with legal requirements about student privacy. We'll talk more about non-functional requirements when we get to the design phase, especially Chapter 8. But it's good to understand and collect non-functional requirements as early as possible in the system's development life cycle. We want to focus first and foremost on the functional requirements in order to understand exactly what the system should do for the user. However, the effect of ignoring non-functional requirements can be devastating and could cause the project to fail. Here are some more examples from the textbook of each of the four types of non-functional requirements. Feel free to pause and take a look through these examples. Now that we understand what system requirements are and the various categories of them, let's talk about how we document them. The main place to document system requirements is in a document called the Requirements Definition Document. This is a text document that lists requirements in outline form. It often includes only system requirements, functional and non-functional. The business requirements are in the system request that we completed earlier, and the user requirements are documented through use cases, which we'll talk about next week. The requirements definition document becomes a central place where designers, analysts, programmers, users, or anybody else can check to make sure that we're all on the same page about what the system should be able to do for us and what characteristics our system has. The requirements definition document can also include priorities. Here's an example of a requirements definition statement. As you can see, 
It's organized in outline form and split into several subsections to make it easier to read. The requirements definition is a required part of your semester project deliverable in this class. This is on page 90 in the 6th edition and page 110 in the 5th edition. Essentially, the requirements definition document determines the scope of our project. Remember last week when we talked about scope creep? This is the document that we can use to make sure scope creep doesn't happen. Now it's your turn to practice. One of the most common mistakes made by new analysts is to confuse functional and non-functional requirements. Here's an exercise taken from 3-1 on page 86 of the 6th edition of the textbook, page 106 in the 5th edition. I've also included this exercise in one of this week's forums. Take a minute to do this practice exercise and let me know if you have any questions about it. In this video, we've discussed classifying requirements correctly, whether as business, user, or system requirements, and that system requirements are functional or non-functional, and we've described the content and purpose of the requirements definition statement. If your requirements definition statement is full and complete, you won't have a project that ends up like this.